Hey guys and welcome to Kerbal Space Program 2. My name is Twitchy, an astrophysicist playing space games and I would like to take you through your first rocket launches. I know this game has an amazing set of tutorials out there, but really some people just like to learn via the magic of video. So if we come through and click the, uh, the single player button on the top of the menu list, uh, you can see there's a big shiny start a new campaign button. Uh, you won't have all these extra save games because I've been playing this game. And now you get to take part of the hardest part of this entire campaign you get to name your campaign I'm gonna be like first flights and we're gonna call the agency name a twitchy aerospace which I could totally type and talk out at the same time. Uh, choose a flag and have a wonderful time. These are totally non-consequential choices that you are making here. So if you just want to go ahead and set this to whatever you would like to, it really does not make much difference. I'm going to leave this first time user experience checked because I do recommend it if you're a first time user. So let's hit the campaign start. I left everything on normal. There were a whole bunch of settings you could use, but almost all of them just just relate to the fact of whether you can quick save or not. You'll get yourself a little bit of a video to start with here. I'm just going to go ahead and skip that. I recommend watching it if you are a new uh, new viewer though. And I'm also just going to ignore Paige telling us about all the wonderful things that are available here. In the KSC, welcome to the Kerbal Space Center. This is the place where you'll be launching any and all rockets and aeroplanes from, from this place over here. There's even a boat dock. Would you believe it? That is amazing. What the thing is that we're most interested in right now is the VAB. That is the Vehicle Assembly assembly building. If you wouldn't believe it, it's where you assemble your vehicles. Uh, and I'm just going to go through all of these very quickly. I, I should really take a moment to read them all, and you should actually take a moment to read them all. But the main reason that I left this up here is so that we have this list of favorites synced up here. Uh, the game is like, hey, you should try and use these parts. And actually, I recommend you use these parts. But where are we going? What are we doing? Uh, if we have a look down in the bottom right, there is a whole bunch of menus available to us. But the one that I wanted to have a look at is the trip planner over here. I just want to take us to Kerbin orbit, but if we just go from Kerbin to Kerbin, the trip planner doesn't actually tell you any of the information that you want. I feel like this is a bit of an oversight myself personally, but I, having played this game a few times before, know that Mun, the Mun, is also in orbit of Kerbin. So to, to get close to there will give us what we need. Uh, and indeed, the only thing we need to know about is this top thing here, Kerbin low orbit. That's where we're going. That's where I want to go. That's where we're going to uh, take this craft to. This craft that we're going to build with a delta V of 3,400. What does delta V mean? Well, it means how much you can change your velocity. But I think all you really need to know is that it's this the magical number down in the bottom right corner that tells you how far you can travel with your craft. And what craft are we going to take? We're just going to take this little capsule. There are Kerbils in available in the Kerbal Manager down here. Bill Kerbin will try and jump in first. I don't think it actually matters who you let in there right now. I'm going to take Valentina because I am partial. We've got a long history, me and Valentina, so we're going to uh, continue on like that. Uh, down the very bottom of the uh, the list here, you'll find a parachute. I always like to attach that nice and early in the process. Quite often, I end up killing Kerbals by slamming them far too hard into the surface of the planet that I'm trying to visit. So if we can avoid that with the use of a, pla of a parachute, that will be wonderful. Uh, the next thing I'm going to to do because this is the only thing I want to bring home. I'm going to put a stage decoupler here. You can see that on the right hand side immediately two things have popped up. The first one is the parachute. You can think about this as like the control panel if you will. The parachute has turned up and also the uh, the separator down the bottom there. What is this separator going to separate us from? It's going to separate us from all the fuel that we're about to take up. Now you might notice straight away that despite the fact that we've put some fuel down it's not giving us a magic number number down the bottom right hand side. That's because a fuel is not the only thing that is um, needed to be able to move your craft. You do need a rocket engine as well. You could probably take the little uh, LV-909 Terrier. If you press shift you get to see, see more of that. Um, but I can tell you this doesn't actually have the power that you need to get off the surface.
surface of Kerbin. Uh, right, hold your right mouse button down to move the mouse, uh, the, move the camera, sorry, round in circles, and then you hold the middle mouse button down to go up and down. I have now gone ahead and made this tiny, small, simplest rocket, but don't launch yet because we noticed that the number down in the bottom right is not the number that we need uh, for the 3,400. And do you know what? As a uh, novice pilot, I recommend going over. Indeed, even me with uh, many, many years of Kerbal Space Program 1 experience and indeed now many hours of Kerbal Space Program 2 experience, I like to put a little bit of buffer in there. I like to have a little bit more fuel than is strictly necessary. So if we go and put a second fuel tank down there and throw the engine on the bottom, you can see 3,700. I mean, that is a little bit more. I do have to admit, but you know what? I think I'm going to go ahead and put one of these extra fuel tanks in here as well. And boom, there we go. 4,000 Delta V seems like the type of uh, craft we can take off with. I'm going to do something that we really should have done at the very beginning. Uh, I'm going to call this the first launcher. You can rename your craft at the top la launchery. Yes, of course. Uh, you can save over this side. I highly recommend always um, saving. But of course, there is a workspace and a vehicle name. Why is it giving you both of these? You may have noticed when I separated the craft and put it down over here, you, it classes these as two separate vehicles. You can use your middle mouse button to swap between the two. Uh, so this is actually the workspace and then you name the vehicles. But I'm, I'm just going to call this workspace the first one. And we got first launcher i do recommend putting a description in but I, I don't think you need to sit here and watch me type now from past experience i know that if we just launch this rocket like this uh it's going to get to about the speed of sound it's going to get about 10 kilometers up uh, and then the pressure of the air pushing on the front is going to end up turning my my spacecraft around so as great as this selection of favorites is that the game has given us straight away there is one thing i feel like we need if we come into the aerodynamics it looks like a wing and um, we're going to try and um, master the aerodynamics so let, let's bring down here we don't want a wing we do indeed want a stabilizer we're trying to stabilize our rocket so we're going to do that turns out the extra small one might be a little bit too small so let's get the regular small one uh now one will not do i think you can all uh see that if we have this fin on this side and it's catching the air as we fly uh it's gonna try and spin us round so at the very bottom you can see we've got this thing called symmetry mode uh this is one of the greatest inventions of uh the whole of the kerbal uh franchise i'm gonna go with three mode i want three of these and just by magic it will go and put this on the rocket for you but you might note that i could just kind of put this anywhere and it comes off at weird angles and I'm not sure that I like the way it looks so if you also press the button right next to it called snap it will then ooh, what's happened here I think if we have a close the parts manager if you ever have this problem uh, let me let me reopen my parts manager I've managed to click on the little spanner that turned up on the side of my of my winglet here I didn't want to do that but it's a great opportunity for me to show you that sometimes the part manager, which just turns up when you start putting parts in the bay, can cover up other menus. You can, you can see this back here. So I'm going to close that down. Now this uh, aero procedure wing, it, this is a great thing. Let me let me show you. Look at what it does to the wing surface here. Uh, much much better if you have some sort of idea for plane but just cross the, uh, the just press the cross button and that'll get rid of that and as i was trying to show you with the snap look at how it now has a um, a grid an alignment to uh, c connect to uh, there's a bit of a, a a coarseness to the the placement and that means that we can um, make sure that everything is well aligned as i said you could press this spanner and then you would be getting rid of the parts manager to uh, to expose this here uh, and you can make any sort of wing structure that you like down here but if you would like my advice just to the left of your screen you have some things that show you uh, where the different forces are going to be playing on your rocket so the pink one is where your engine thrusts and as you can see the pink forces are pushing from underneath the the uh yellow one is where the center of mass is uh, there's basically you can figure it as uh, the center of your seesaw uh, and the blue pushes um, around the seesaw so this 
when we're in flight, the yellow is kind of in place and the blue is what does any pushing. Now, I feel like Kerbal has slightly bugged out here for us because I was expecting to see this blue right in line with everything else. Uh, to change that, I'm going to go ahead and just pick this up and put it back down and hope that that will do the number that we need. Why is this so different? Okay, I'm afraid we're just going to have to accept this as a bug. Does it turn... No, it doesn't move if we turn the rocket around. Um, so, yeah, I know that all of these, because of the way we've done symmetry and made sure that it was in snap mode, uh, that all of these are in alignment. But the thing I wanted to say was to make sure that the blue is below the uh, the yellow circle. Of course, coming through with the parts, you, you could quite easily make a situation, something like this, uh, when you uh, say, yes, please, make it like that. The, the blue is now way above, and uh, that is a recipe for an unbalanced spacecraft. Trying to reset, I always like to make sure that this bottom wing angle is nice and straight, and I don't think we need too strong uh, of a wing span there. I'm just going to take that. That looks fine. So we've got the launch mass that we need. We've got the uh, the rocket that we need. What are we going to do? We're going to press the big green button. It says launch. Of course, that's what we're going to do. Okay, are you ready to fly? Here's some pointers. Don't worry. I'm going to talk you through it. What we mostly want to pay attention to is the nav ball down the left-hand side. You can see that our throttle is already all the way up to 100%. Uh, it shows us a little altitude sensor on the side here. We've got our actual altitude in numbers uh, in the pink and then a representation of how far we are through the atmosphere in blue. You can also see that we've got this little green button called SAS. This is the stability assist uh, system uh, and indeed that's what this section of your UI is all about. This is a um, a pointing aid. This will let your craft look in the direction you want the craft to look in. Uh, right at the moment, we've got this stability lock on. That means it will just carry on looking in the way that it is looking. But we've got a whole selection of other clusters. I'm going to talk through a few of them as we are flying, so don't worry too much about that. We also have time control down the bottom here. We're on times one. We can also pause the game. If ever anything goes crazy, press the button, pause, think about it and find out what you can do about it. But of course, we just want to take off now. So what are we going to do? We're going to hit the gr big green button. Now, a Kerbal will start counting down in the background. If you're an impatient soul, you can press the button again. But I am quite happy to let this uh, Kerbal do their job. You know, they've been paid quite a substantial government fund to be able to sit there and read out the correct numbers in the right order. So we are now blasting off with quite the, uh, the amount of speed here. But we are just going straight straight up and down. And let me tell you, whilst going to space can be achieved by this, staying in space is not. So I'm going to press my D button here and try and push my nav ball over to the side. The nav ball is kind of a um, representation of what you can see. At the moment, we see sky, but if we carry on over, we'll start seeing the ground as well. But I want to stop at this second marker, and we're going to just stay there until we get about uh, 250 surface speed. That is the, uh, the number in the yellow. It's a good time to just kind of press down your right mouse button and have a look around look at the ksc see the wonders that is going on the uh, the beauty of the clouds and just the uh, majesty of the planet you are flying over so now that i'm over 250 meters per second what i'm actually going to do is hit something called this pro grade uh, lock here target my pro grade the pro grade is the direction that i am traveling in um, so if i was to look along my rocket the pro grade is that direction. There's also retrograde, which is the opposite direction. Retro is uh, backwards and pro is forwards. Uh, we also have some things like to point upwards, point north, but none of those are particularly important when we are flying our way. Now, I have decided that I want to try and put this rocket into an orbit of about 100 kilometers. And down underneath your nav ball, the apoapsis, the uh, AP here, the apo -curbo, we've I think we decided on stream the other day, is slowly counting up. And indeed, if we press M, uh, you can see that that is this AP marker and it's counting up in step. Now, I want this number at the bottom to be a hundred. Uh, 100 kilometers, so that's uh, 100,000 meters. So I'm just going to press X. X is the button that immediately stops all of your throttle. Uh, shift to go up, control to go down. Uh, but I like to use Z and X uh, just just for the 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 
full-blown go and no go. Paige is trying to tell us all about the map view. Uh, I'm actually going to say down here is probably one of the better ways to control your map view. You can see that this is flight mode, this is map mode, and this is the tracking station. You can click the middle button and it will show you that view that I was just having a look at. You can see right now we have a little bit of a problem though. I, with my Apple apps is at 100 kilometers, we are still going to end up hitting the surface of the planet. Now, how do we avoid doing that? Well, um, to stay in space, it's actually all about going sideways very, very fast. If you just go up and down, gravity always pulls onto you. So you will always be going down towards the planet. But you might notice that the planet is the size of a ball, is the shape of a ball, sorry. So if you're going sideways fast enough over in this direction, the gravity is always trying to pull your path down towards the planet. But if you go fast enough, you can keep pushing that path straighter and straighter until eventually it ends up going all the way around, which we're going to have a look at in a moment. We're about a minute away from Apple Apsis. What I'm going to do is click halfway in between and go, hey, time warp two point. I want to be about 30 seconds away from my uh, Apple Kerbo uh, if I can possibly do that. You might notice that it says time warp limited to proximity to the planet. It's actually this grayed out section down at the bottom here. Uh, you could go all the way up to uh, millions, 10 million times speed are there but uh, that close to the planet things go very wrong so the game limits you to only a hundred times we're about 16 seconds away you don't have to worry too much about being precise about this but about 10 seconds I want to start throttling up my engine here and I need to bring my periapsis so the apoapsis is the highest point of your orbit and the uh, periapsis or pericurbo as it's the orbit around Kerbin uh, is the lowest point uh, I'm gonna now I'll put stability on. Uh, if I continued looking prograde, I think we would have still made it into orbit, but as we go up and over our highest point of the orbit, my nose will start looking down more and more. And I want to make sure that I'm looking above the horizon. If I turn ever so slightly this way, just 90 degrees. Oh, look at this. My periapsis has actually gone up. I'm going to start, but I'm going to stop my engine. The moment your camera goes nuts like that, stop your engine. It means things have gone well. Uh, but I wanted to show you the relationship. Can I turn my camera? V to change your camera. I wanted horizon. Sorry, I'm not used to the, uh, the, the camera name. So if we look this way at the horizon, you can see um, how the nav ball with the sky and the ground matches up to what my craft can see. Uh, it's, it's just a beautiful little demonstration of that, I, uh, I thought. So we've made our way up into orbit. Congratulations. Small, small round of applause. Uh, you can see that there's not really much Delta V left in this rocket. Uh, we knew that. We, we had uh, allowed for that. Indeed, try to make it as close as possible. But the 247 will definitely bring uh, my Kerbal back home. But I don't really, I don't want to bring them back anywhere. I want to bring them back close to the Kerbal Space Center. So I'm going to select a point halfway between these two peninsula of desert. This is just an area that I myself have learned to recognize over time. Uh, let's take a moment to watch the planet spin around underneath us. When I right clicked and said, could you time warp here? It did not hang around. It indeed did take us there. But you can see there's one of the peninsulas. Is, is that right? Is that really where we are? I feel like it slowed us down too early. Do you know why? It's something that I forgot to take into account, and I bet, guess this is a beautiful demonstration of that. Kerbin is spinning constantly underneath you, uh, and your orbit, once you've left the surface of Kerbin, is decoupled from the surface. You, know, you, you no longer are being pushed by it. Uh, so your orbit will stay there whilst Kerbin rotates underneath you. So places where you thought you would end up, in fact, will move a little bit. And indeed, just in one orbit, move this much further around, which is it's quite a lot it's quite a lot so try and bear that in mind when you are thinking about where you are going to fly your spacecraft talking of flying your spacecraft i want to return and i'm going to do it using the wonders of these maneuver plans i'm going to click on there click on the maneuver plan and ask it to slow down it's quite um i feel intuitive to click on the arrow that points in the direction that you want to fire your rocket so if i want to slow down i want to go backwards uh, and so i'm going to pull on that now it's telling me i've got no fuel once i've done this okay so i think we might have to try and do it a different way and indeed we're going to go around in a different orbit let's go to the point where it doesn't say me say no fuel anymore 
Uh, I'm I'm sorry, Mr. Kerbal. I know you really wanted to uh, to announce that. Um, maneuver but if you find yourself in this situation i find the best way is to bring this down uh, to as close as your fuel will allow and this just kind of bring the maneuver node back to where you want to try and bring this down now this is where the maneuver where the the turning of the planet underneath you comes into play we thought it was about this far so i'm going to once again judge it to be about this far and then show you this wonderful button next to the maneuver plan that you uh, had set up all of this down here is related to your maneuver press that warp to maneuver button your spacecraft will once again go ripping around the planet ah oh, it, it just looks amazing whilst you're doing all of this do remember to take a moment to just stop and look at the majesty of the planet around you like this this is one of the most amazing parts of the game just just the whole ballet of orbital dynamics and the space and like the uh, the atmosphere down there like have you ever noticed this big crater one of my favorite parts on the whole of the Kerbin system. So, time is ticking down for us. You can see that in about 10 seconds, uh, we should we are scheduled to start this burn. Indeed, when we get down to 4, 3, you can watch these traffic lights start up. And I'm going to press Z just to burn through all of my fuel as that happens. Okay, beautiful. I ran out of fuel. That's fine. I'm going to turn off that maneuver node now. So... This booster is now completely empty of fuel. We can we can open these up and it doesn't actually show us on the parts manager. I forgot about that. But we can look down here and it, you can see there are no green lines on these uh, these fuel lines down here. So to do a staging, we press space or press the green button. I'm going to once again press the green button and hopefully it will do number two for us, which is the decoupler up the top end. If you're never ever unsure, you can highlight over the uh, the stage and it will show you uh, on the on the main flight screen but let's press go and away we are loosened from our vessel now this because it's heavier will punch through the atmosphere with a bit more energy a bit more force so i will be slowed down quicker than this booster will be i also feel like we could do with orientating a little bit better to the the ground okay this is looking wonderful and beautiful i'm going to speed up time and show you one of the beautiful things about kerbal space program if you go for a times 100 uh, you will eventually come down to the point where you hit the atmosphere and you saw there it changed my uh, my time warp to times four because it's like no we've got too much physics simulations to be running here let's not do that um but i'm going to bring us down to times one because we've hit the atmosphere and what do you need in the atmosphere well at some point you're going to need a parachute so i'm going to press space again it has fired my my staging and this is a, an important note about parachutes is you don't need to fire them when you want them to open uh, there's a whole point a whole bunch of deploy settings here but the most important thing that you can see is that they will deploy at one kilometer up which means that if you are out in space or maybe if you have have got a, um, a robotic craft that is going to end up doing a landing on the dark side of a planet you can turn your parachutes on first and then as long as you the player are watching so that everything is loaded the parachutes will um, will operate as as you expect as you expect now we might be very well in the atmosphere right now indeed we are 30 kilometers up but there is very very little atmospheric drag you can see that we are in on this atmosphere gauge here we're only in the highest area uh, indeed well we did was that two parachutes there did i really just see two parachutes there um as we get down into the lighter and lighter areas of the atmosphere, the drag does increase a lot, a lot more. Uh, unfortunately, the predicted path seems to be a little bit off. I can only assume it's because of the weight difference of my craft. Uh, but as we are plummeting down, you can see that we're about seven kilometers up. I'm going to carry this down all the way. I'm going to carry on fast speed, sorry, all the way down to about mm, one and a half kilometers. And then just from sheer 
habit, I'm going to go back down to real speed because I like to watch these nice little adventures happening. Though, of course, once we get under full parachute, we have slowed down to six meters per second. Uh, and as the fact that we are 900 meters up in the air, I mean, that's that's a very long time. That's like 150 seconds to wait. So I'm going back up to times four. Uh, and I, I feel like, oh, we can see the different water uh, water effects overlaying with each other here. This is beautiful. Watching the play of the sun on the uh, the water as we come down for splashdown. I'm getting close to uh, 300 uh, meters off the floor here. So I'm a little bit scared. So I'm going to turn down my speed. And I feel like we splashed down before splashdown actually occurred. But here we are, splash down oh that is a uh, beautiful normally at this point we would get a little notification in the corner from Paige telling us that we uh, we have landed and that we can recover but for some reason that hasn't shown up so if you don't if you ever are in the situation where it doesn't tell you press escape and there is recover vessel that button will be available to you any time that you have landed but two other buttons you probably should be aware of in case things go wrong is you can revert back to the launch in case your flying went wrong or you can revert back to the VAB in case your building went wrong. Maybe, I don't know, you forgot a parachute. Let's recover the vessel, confirm recovery, uh, and let's give ev everyone a round of applause as you have completed your first space mission. Well done. Well done. Uh, I'm going to go to the tracking station just because I like to see everything that's going on. And you can see that we have a beautiful, clean and empty system. A system full of possibilities and ones that I highly encourage you to get out there and explore. My name's been Twitchy. That was the simplest and fastest orbital mission I thought I could possibly guide you through. I hope you enjoyed and I will see you guys next time. Bye.